theyeshiva.net. So welcome everybody to our second class in the classic work, Toymer Dvorah, the Palm of Dvorah, by one of the great Kabbalists of Jewish history, the Ramak, Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, who was born in 1522 and passed away in the year 1570. At the age of 48, buried in Svas, as discussed in the first installment. And today we actually begin learning the work. So, if you have a time of Dvoira, that's great. You can open it up. Perikrishan, the first chapter. If you don't, you can go to theyeshiva.net. And in the class on Taimur Dvorah, you could see the source sheets and follow inside. You can also download it. You can get it online. This is a very famous work. We're right here on the yeshiva.net. We have the full text, Taimur Dvorah, and we go to chapter one, Perik Rishon. Says the Ramak, I begin. Ha'adam ro'yu she'yizdama l'kayne. This is really the key word for the entire work. It's appropriate for a person to resemble his creator. The creation should reflect the creator. Va'az yiye b'sayid ha'tzura ha'lyayna. And then the person becomes configured as a reflection of the divine persona, as it were. Tzura ha'lyayna literally means the image of the divine, the higher image, so that the lower image reflects the higher image. Adam, the word Adam, is usually translated as a human being, and it comes from the word Adama, earth, as it says in Bereshis, because Adam came from Adama. The Shalah, one of the great mystics and scholars who lived shortly after Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, Rabbi Yeshai Horowitz writes that the name Adam has another meaning. It means reflection. Dome, I'm similar. We have in we have in the Tanakh, Adam el Elyon, Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonian emperor said, Adam el Elyon, I am compared to the divine, because his his infinite ego made him feel that he's a god. Adam, Adam comes the word Adam. I I'm a reflection. I'm a reflection of who? I'm a reflection of divine infinity. I am a mirror. So the Ramak begins his work. The most fitting posture for a human being is when my posture, when your posture, when your image, when your visage, when your body and your mind and your soul and your attitudes reflect the divine persona, the Adam Ha'elyon, the Tzura Ha'elyon, the divine form. Tselem Udmus, in two ways. You're a, in, in literally in image and in likeness. Tselem Udmus means both my physical image, my physical posture, and my spiritual posture, my psychological, emotional, and my physical posture reflect the divine. If somebody reflects the divine only in his or her body, in my physical structure, in my anatomy, but not in my behaviors, so then you are you are disappointing you're uh, you're betraying the form you are really a mirror of god so if i'm only reflecting god in the body because from a jewish perspective the body is sacred and every aspect of our anatomy reflects divine spiritual anatomy as we will see later on this is called in kabbalah the the sephiratic divine persona god in his infinity um identifies with his, within his infinite presence ten characteristics known as the ten spheres which become the divine persona. So if I only mirror the divine in my physical structure, which is a reflection of the divine, man you, man and woman created in the visage of God, but Salam Elohim. But I am betraying the higher form because my actions are not reflecting the divine. Hariyu machziv hatsura, the person is betraying the higher form. V'yoymiru alav, and then they say about him, tsura na umaisav chuurim, a lovely, beautiful form, but ugly deeds. And that's, that's inappropriate. <laughs> so you look at a person, every body, every body as in every physical body, B-O-D-Y, is sacred. It's really divine. The Zohar has an expression, Gufa de Lahon Kadisha. Not just the soul that's sacred. It's the body that's sacred. That's why Judaism confers so much dignity on the guf and on the body during life and also after life. 
because the body is not just a vehicle for the soul, but the body itself, the very physical structure, the 80 or 70 or 60 trillion cells that form the body, each one of those has profound spiritual significance. The physical, physiological composition of a person, the chemistry of a person, is essentially a reflection of spiritual divine energy. Literally, every single aspect of the body, every bone, every sinew, every vein, every tissue, all the nine systems of the biological system, every single cell, every single neuron, tells a divine story. It's incredible. The study of the body is really a study of the manifestation of godliness in this world. Job says, From my flesh, I perceive God. And the Balatanya often explains that what this means is that from the very structure of your body and your mind, you could learn so much about the divine. Come so, but, But if somebody only reflects the divine in their physical body, which is basically not your choice. That's God's creation. But my deeds, if my deeds don't reflect the divine form, then I'm betraying the form. They'll say, beautiful guy, beautiful man, beautiful woman, but mice of Kurim, but the actions are, are grotesque. Because the primary space where the divine form is expressed is through your behavior through your actions. What is it going to help? That the structure and the build and the image of all my limbs and organs reflect God. Because the way the human body was structured and created is a reflection of the divine. But in my actions, in my encounters, in my interactions, in my behaviors, I don't reflect the Creator. What point is this? The... The the what what you what will you benefit from the fact that your external structure and the limbs of the body resemble the higher form, but not my behaviors. And therefore, it's befitting that a person make his or her actions resemble what's called the actions of the crown. Keser. What does it mean? The actions of the crown. Very briefly. In Kabbalistic teachings, this is a foundational teaching of Kabbalah, there is what's called, I spoke about the ten sephiros, right? Ten sephiros are basically ten lights, ten characteristics, which which channel the infinite divine energy that God chose to channel His energy in order to create, sustain, vivify, and relate to the universe. And the entire cosmos, the spiritual cosmos and the physical cosmos, are all formed and structured based on those ten characteristics known as the ten spheros. The human soul as well. When the Torah says, let us make man, nasa adam, in our image, Kabbalistically what that means is that the human persona is made up of ten faculties, ten characteristics known as the ten spheros, the ten characteristics. The first one at the top is called keser, the crown. So he begins, the person must reflect the behaviors of that crown, which represent the 13 famous attribute of divine compassion. They're known as the Yud Gimel Midas Arachamim. They are rooted in what's called the divine crown, the divine Kesser, which is the first and the highest of all of the spheros. And that's going to be the focus of chapter 1. Urimuzais, these 13 attributes of compassion, are intimated beside Hapsukim in the secret of the verses of the prophet Micha, the prophet Micah. One of the great prophets in the group of the 12 shorter prophecies, Trey Usar, was Micha, who lived during the first Beis Hamikdash, during the first sanctuary, closer to the end of it. And he prophesizes, and his prophecies are known as the prophecies of Micha. And in chapter 7, he speaks about, and he says, and here the Rabbi Moshe Kodavera quotes the Pasuk, Mi End quote. This is Micah chapter 7, verses 18 through 20. Translation, translation of these words. Who is a God like you? Who could be compared to you? Noise Avain. Noise Avain means. He contains 
iniquity contains sin. Over al pesha, he foregoes transgression. Lishe'eris nachalasai. For the remainder of his inheritance, he does not hold on to his wrath forever because he loves kindness. He will return and have compassion on us, conquer our transgressions, and cast away all of their sins into the depths of the sea. May you give truth to Jacob and kindness to Abraham, our forefathers for, to whom you made an oath from the days of yore. Now, obviously, these verses of Micha contain a lot. But the Zohar explains that they correspond to the 13 attributes of compassion, which Hashem, God, revealed to Moses, to Moshe, after the Jews created a golden calf in Parshish Kisisa. Hashem reveals to Moshe Rabbeinu the 13 attributes of compassion, which we recite every day, especially during the times of Elul and Tishrei. Hashem, Hashem, Kel Rachem, V'chanan, Erech, Apayim, V'rav, Chesed, V'emes, Noitzeh, Chesed, Alof, V'noitzeh, Oven, V'fashem, V'chatov, V'nakei. Micha, these verses are a commentary to the 13 attributes in Parshas Kisisa. They parallel each other. We'll soon see how they parallel each other. In Cain, if so, in each person, it is befitting that I should find in myself these 13 attributes. So now we're going to begin to explain these 13 attributes which a person should possess and live with. So the Ramak began that the human being ought to, to know who he is, who she is, who am I? I'm a mirror of the divine. Not just physically, physically too, but also spiritually, psychologically, emotionally, and most important in my behavior. So we begin with the first aspect of the divine form called the crown, which includes the 13 attributes of compassion expressed in those verses in Micha, Mikel Kamoicha. And what we're focusing on now is the divine attributes of compassion, the way I could mirror them in my day-to-day life. So he's going to go through now in chapter 1 these 13 attributes, the way they can be reflected in a person's behaviors, interactions, and encounters, and his or her thoughts, words, and actions on a day-to-day basis as we will continue, Bezer Hashem, in our next class, Taimid Vaira number 3. I want to emphasize that uh, this class and these classes were initiated and dedicated in the merit of Binyamin Yisrael ben Chanita for a refuah shlema, for a complete and speedy recovery, a young boy living in Passaic, New Jersey. May he have and enjoy many, many long years, long, healthy, happy, prosperous years. Parents should dance with him at his wedding in the right time, in the right space, and enjoy many years filled of good health and abundance and light and all of the obstacles should be transformed into opportunities and blessings and darkness into light and a refuah shleimah to you, Binyamin Yisrael, as well as a complete and speedy recovery for Yechiel, Shalom Mardechai ben Malkin Nechamehena, and for David Chaim ben Tzipora, a complete and speedy recovery to all of you, Betoich Kol Chayli Yisrael, among all of the ill of the Jewish people, including all those who were wounded in Miran last week, on Lagbar, may they all have a complete and speedy recovery, and all of the Jewish people in the world experience a complete and wholesome redemption immediately. Thank you. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.